My thesis is that there's been a quiet revolution, a quiet scientific discovery that is happening at the margins of many of the disciplines in social science. It's oftentimes not seen. It's not what gets picked up in the mass media. But yet, it has created some enormously interesting findings. And that quiet scientific discovery that's been going on in different parts of different disciplines, oftentimes not the main stuff you see in the textbooks, is a science of social and behavioral change. How to actually change people's behaviors. Change them for the good. It's not something that's clearly identified in these fields, and so it's been quiet. But what I want to do today is begin to shout it, to be more vocal about it, and to look for people all across these marginal disciplines and say, look, we have a lot in common. Let's start talking and let's start working together and changing behavior. Before getting into the details of this science of social influence, I want to ask why? What goes on in each of these little subfields? Why are they creating this body of knowledge that actually works? Well, they all have certain things in common. And the first is, I, I, I quote from my field, Kurt Lewin, if you truly want to understand something, try to change it. There's an, uh, you, if you, you can speculate, you can discuss, you can pontificate about behavior or whatever you'd like for as long as you want. Until you change it, you don't really know it. All of these sciences are empirically driven, not theoretically driven. And they have a strong emphasis on the experimental method. I want to go out, I've got multiple tactics, let me see what will work in that situation. Their theory is close to data, limited theoretical constructs. You won't see massive theoretical variables on the unconscious. One of the most important ones, and, I'll, and it's important, I'll phrase it both the way you would say, I think you would say it and the way I would say it. No fundamental attribution error and no homunculus error. The fundamental attribution error in social psychology is that when, we try to, when people try to explain behavior, they underweight the power of the situation and said, say, not, this person obeyed the authority, not because of the authority cues in that situation, the power of social forces there, but instead they must be obedient, they must be conscientious, they must be something, some trait. The homunculus error, there's always a little man in the machine, that does exactly what you need to do to get power of the big machine. And I've often thought, if I ever give up research, I'll just go off and say there's actually a man in the machine that's running the man in the machine that's running the man in the machine. Because they don't make the fundamental attribution error, and here's where the, in, in the homunculus error, here's where the power comes in. They turn to the situation for explanation. And each of these disciplines that I mentioned have developed a way of looking at the power of the situation, pulling it apart to see why it's having the influence it's having on a person's behavior. And the final thing that's interesting, and I don't see this as a cause, I see it more as a consequence, all these disciplines have extended literatures on ethics. I find that interesting. Why? Because they have to. Because you're changing somebody's behavior. You need a theory of ethics.